Hey everybody, it's Will. Uh, hope everybody has been doing good and uh, 2016 has been kicking off to a good start for you guys. Um, uh, sorry, I'm sounding really low right now. It is currently uh, 1045 as I'm recording this little intro blurb and um, my walls are extremely thin and I'm trying not to wake up the family. <laughs> but anyway, um, as some of you or as a lot of you may know, I was at Pacific PonyCon last weekend, and um, I'm pretty sure that most of you have seen my vlogs of the event, and uh, if not, then you'll probably know from that and my announcement video that um, a couple of events uh, happened there. One of them is um, a panel which I hosted called How to Give the Horse Its Nay, uh, Tips and Tricks for Online Voice Acting, and... Um, the video which you're about to watch is the uh, panel in its entirety, and um, joining me on that panel are uh, guests uh, Heartless Omega, Keyframe, uh, Pegasus Pitch, and a bag of Vicodin. Um, I want to extend uh, my personal thank you to uh, Golden Fox for um, helping me record this panel. Um, and just to let you know, uh, the fir it's sort of like split into two, like if you notice like the uh, audio quality changes part way through, it's because for the first portion of the panel it was recorded using Key's camera, uh, but part way through the battery ran out, and um, uh, Golden Fox recorded the rest of the panel using his. Uh, if you see like the quality in uh, video and audio change part way through the video, that's the reason why, because uh, the first camera we used, um, uh, like I said, the battery drained out, so we had to switch cameras. Uh, but again, I want to extend thanks to Golden Fox for uh, helping to film this panel. So, uh, yeah, it's basically me and the four other people giving tips and tricks for um, uh, online voice acting for uh, those who are just getting started, or for those who just want, you know, reminders of, you know, tips and tricks and stuff like that, but I'm rambling at this point. So, um, yeah, with that said, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the panel, and I'll talk to you guys later. Hello, everybody. How are you enjoying the Sunday of Pacific Pony Con? Well, the day's not over yet, so welcome to How to Give the Horse Its Nay, Tips and Tricks for Online Voice Acting in the Fandom or just online in general. I am your moderator for the panel, the Wilsonator. Um, I've been acting ever since I, I guess we'll just go ahead and go down the line and introduce ourselves. Um, I've been acting ever since I was in kindergarten, um, did a lot of musical theater, and then it was around, around the time Ponies came around when I decided to try voice acting uh, online. I've been in a lot of different projects. One of my most well-known ones you might know me as Discord and um, the finale of Bride of Discord, that audio drama, and uh, its sequel, which uh, the second episode will be released sometime this month. Um, I've collabed with the likes of The Inverted Shadow, Obab Scribbler, uh, Toucan LDM, to name a few, and uh, just, uh, yeah, and uh, let me go ahead. I'm a bag of Vicodin. I voice act from time to time depending on projects that I'm thrown into. One of the most noticeable ones was the heroic tale of heroically heroic heroes with Scribbler. I was the uh, Stone of Ages. And um, I've been doing it pretty much on and off. I mostly collab with other people like uh, Lost Narrator, um, other stuff like that. And I've been acting since high school. Took a few acting classes. Like, yeah, I can get it. I work at the hotel, I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Spencer. Um, I guess I'm known on Twitch as Heartless Omega. Um, I've been doing voiceover stuff since, uh, I guess like shortly after high school is when I found my interest. Um, I do a lot of little projects on the side, mostly, I guess I work with um, uh, Midnight Marinara. They do uh, kind of like a spooky broadcast. It's kind of cool. Um, also, this guy right here, uh, if any of you were at BabsCon in 2014, he was the winner of the Voice Equestria, judged by Andrea Lindman and Terrence Cron and Brian Bond. It was great. Yeah, and what uh, I do that with honey. And last year, I was runner-up in the uh, same contest. So. <laughs> this guy's good. I can't even spell that. 
You know, you actually give professional gigs like with Cartoon Network and all that. Yes. So I'm, I'm the, like, I guess to throw a name out there, like Black Griffin, where coming from this fandom, you can go into um, professional voice acting. It's very possible. It's, it's, it's not, I won't say it's easy. It's, it's very hard to do. But if you have the drive, you can. Know. What are your most long voices that you do for, um, like, your pitch and magpie comic dubs? Well, um, so my, my whole thing is I do pretty much every male voice. Like if there's a male voice, I'll do it. I won't do it well some of the times, but I can do it. Like most of them for like Shining Armor. Most of them, yeah, for Shining Armor, Discord, uh, Braveheart, Big Mac, all the big comics. Yep. 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 Hello, everyone. I'm Discord. That's a, uh, I believe I was called Tish. <laughs> Chaos shall reign. <laughs> oh. I don't know why I'm up here. Um, they kind of kidnapped me. Please send help. Um, hello, my name is Keyframe of Keyframe Productions on YouTube. And um, if you see me around the con, I'm um, I've been a voice actor since uh, around the beginning of last year. Um, I, I actually started voice acting by accident because one of, one of the voice actors for Scribbler's Halloween thing, oh, that was Scribbler, um, dropped out and then he did a bottom on voice and I was like, hey, I can do it. And then I did it and then the rest is history. Um, she pretty much considers you her savior whenever, you know, other female VAs drop out. So she, she, I'm she, the backup plan, yeah! She, she like gets what she uh, is asked to report and does it within like a day. So. Yes, um, for voices that I oftenly do for people, because I do stuff on my own channel. Um, I do comic dub, key dubs and key reads. My biggest one being a reading of Wanderer D's The Changeling yeah. Queen, where I play Rarity, Celestia, and um, Queen Chrysalis, which I can't do without the effect. But um, he, voices people ask me to do mostly are uh, Rarity, um, Pinkie Pie. I get asked to do Celestia a lot, and the most recent ones that are doing is uh, Granny Smith. Uh, so I do a lot of Tabitha voices, except for Luna. Fancy cars and ties hairs are way back in the future as well and becomes to the end. Alright, so now that you know who we are, we're just going to go over a few slides on uh, if... First of all, any of you out there are considering becoming an online voice actor? Show of hands? Okay. Well, these are just uh, little uh, tips and tricks that I feel can apply to, uh, well, not just voiceover, but practically any form of acting if you're interested. So, first things first, become an actor. A common misconception that we get all the time is you think you can just, oh, just pop in your mic, do a silly voice, and then bam, it's done. No, that is not the case. You need, the purpose, the purpose of acting is to play characters believably and competitively. Because I don't know about you, but even either online or like in Hollywood or in New York City, it's a very, very competitive business. And, and that's another thing. Voice acting is not a job, it is a business. There is a big distinction between the two. And this is a sort of a quote from uh, Christopher Freeman. Basically, acting is being able to play pretend so well that people want to hire you and pay you to do it. So, like, remember when you were a little kid and you had, like, you know, play with Legos or make box sports and stuff like that and went on these all grand adventures? You need to do that so well as an adult that people want to pay you to do it. Uh, Will, would you mind telling them who Crispy Chicken is? Crispin Freeman, if you don't know, he is a um, 
voice actor in a lot of anime. Uh, one of his most known roles is uh, Kion in the melancholy uh, Haruhi Suzumiya. Uh, he also plays, uh, I believe, Aquaman in uh, Young Justice, among uh, other things. And uh, he has this um, blog and podcast called Voice Acting Mastery, which I highly recommend. And uh, it's full of tips and tricks of how he got into the business and you know what he can pass on. He has like interviews and stuff like that. So that's definitely something I recommend. And like I said before, acting is not just doing a silly voice. The voice is just a layer of the character that you got picked to voice or play. And like I said, this applies for either voice acting or theater acting, TV acting, whatever. And uh, the voice does the work of the spirit. Whenever you're in the moment, when you're in the scene, you just you just go for it. Basically, you have to put yourself in the scene, but you're not really playing yourself. You're playing somebody else, but you need to put your own experiences into whatever scene you're doing, and the voice will just come naturally yeah. to you. There was actually a saying that I had for that. Um, I, I can't remember who told me, but it's, you're being silly and that's fine, but do you believe you're silly? I, I like that. It's like, if you, like, also, if you were a little kid, you you did, you didn't really care too much about like like it's like oh did I did I play the knight in shining armor well while building this box for nobody will care you just go for it you just go all out and it's basically a willingness to enter a secondary reality the problems in your in your secondary reality. Uh, in your first reality, like in real life, mean nothing in a secondary reality, which is your moment in the scene. Which is why um, there's a difference between being an impersonator and being a voice actor, because anyone could anyone could impersonate the lines from the show, being like, "Oh, was I too loud?" But a voice actor is able to do pinky in all. Fluttershy in all sorts of situations because there's going to be times where you voice her angry and there's times where you're going to voice her annoyed. There's times where you're going to voice her being annoyed at a drive through at McDonald's depending on the fic or animation. I want to see that now. But you got to you got to not only take the personality and the experiences that you have gone through to help you influence how you think the character would act. But you also got to do a little bit of Twilight research to know your role, know your character, and think about who you're playing. Which is why role playing is good for both actors and writers. Yeah, the one thing that I would add, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that impersonation is kind of the first step when it comes to being a voice actor. It's kind of your research, because when you're looking at all, especially if you want to play a canon character, you're looking at all these scenes especially and you're capable of emulating them, then you have to transfer that into doing other projects, because all the projects, if you go on to like pony voice acting projects and everything, they're not reliant on all these scenes that you've done before. You're transferring that data that you have from that into something else. Um, yeah. Yeah, I actually like that. It, it, it reminds me of, you know, why Robin Williams is actually so, so good, because, you know, he takes, you know, the traits from the people he's impersonating and he makes it his own. Like, Sometimes it can be a dead-on impression, but another thing is to, like even most other voice actors today can get roles by doing terrible impersonations of other people out there, and they, that, is, that in and of itself can be its own character. Yeah, because like, um, I mean, when you look at some characters, they use, a lot of characters in media are based off someone else's voice. For example, uh, who here has seen Animaniacs when they were a kid? And I think we can all guess that Wacko Warner was based off of uh, the Beatles. And, exactly. then, and many people think it was Ringo, but when Jess Harnell auditioned, she, he just did a bad John Lennon impression, which are two completely different voices, and it became Ringo, or Wacko. And the thing is, when you research these roles and what you're doing, or just the genre of the character, whether it's going to be like an anime girl or something, you can't just get the words right and the tone right, you also gotta get the inflections. Like, if you're doing, Rarity's a great example, because not only does she have the transatlantic voice, she has a warble, 
Tabitha does like a warble, so it's always like this. It's a going up and down, and a lot of voice actors don't get it. And you also need to, you know, add, like, it's not just the words. You have to put the emotion into the words, because the other point is you need to be able to bring in an audience that will want to continue to listen to you, because an audience is a very, very crucial part of any acting. If you yourself are not bringing all that you've got, like if, if you're going into a scene half-heartedly, the audience will pick it up just like that, and they will not believe you. Yeah, and don't do just the exaggerated moments. That's a mistake a lot of newbie voice actors do. A lot of people do when Rarity's freaking out or when Pinkie Pie's having one of her, you know, pinky sense spasms. But you gotta be able to do the characters when they're calm, when they're do, just neutral. It's That's every, every single emotion in the entire spectrum. Uh, yes, you have a question? Can you, can you provide an example of going into it, you know, really engaged, going into it not really? Basically, um, say you have a scene where, like say, you're late on a bill or something. Like, a character is late on a bill. If you have to think of a time when you yourself were late on the bill and you felt the stress, you felt the pressure, and it's like you have to bring that in. It's like, hello, yes, okay, yeah, I know the bill's late, I'm kind of going through a rough time right now, can, you, can I please get an extension, I'm really freaking out. You need to really bring that experience that you had and connect it with the character you're playing. So, moving, moving on to the next point, uh, mindsets and other crucial skills to have. Um, when you know why you say what you say, it informs you and it allows you to play. This is a great um, quote from uh, Richard Horvitz, who, if you don't know, is the voice of Invader Zim or the voice of Billy from The Great Adventures of Billy and Mandy or Squirrel Boy. I, I have the honor of uh, taking a uh, class with him and uh, he speaks the truth. When you know why you say what you say, it informs you and allows you to play. So basically, you need to be able to take the words right off the page so that, because, and another thing is, you know, never stop learning. Because a lot of, a lot of professionals think, oh, I know, oh, I know everything. I can just do, I do everything with this, the stem of a finger. No. That basically, any, any form of art set, you're learning new things every day. You never, ever stop that because it'll continue to build up um, you know, the skills you have in your repertoire, all that sort of sort of good stuff. Yeah, this is a professional and he's not done learning. I mean, he told me a few days ago that he's been working on some other voices, and that's kind of the thing with voice acting, going back to being competitive. When you're capable of emulating so many voices so well, when you get professional, especially, you have all of these networking opportunities, and then you might even get free casting. That's happened in the fandom a lot. Exactly. Especially with no acting. I mean, Miles Scratch doesn't have a voice to this day. This is the example that I always already use. But Nowak made such a noticeable voice for Miles Scratch that everyone wanted her for like two years in fandom projects. There were a lot of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it, whenever you're a professional, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how professional you think you are or how many voices you know you can do. Um, there's always something. There's always something. I, learn, I figure that out every day whenever I talk to the people that are above me, like the writers and directors and the people who do animation even. Because even they can give you direction. They can give you a new light to how you play the character that's being portrayed on the screen. Yeah, and any staff members that you're working with or any fellow actors, they can always give you, you know, their insight. And practically, that's pretty much what we're doing to you guys to help, you know, expand what you um, already know and, you know, like I said, build upon. Yeah, and when and just because you can't do a voice when you first start doesn't mean it won't grow. Because um, with Granny Smith, when I first did it, I had to stretch out my lips so it would sound like her. And I <laughs> and yeah, now, now you don't do that. And now I don't need to. And I'm glad because it used to be a terrible cold source on the edge of my lips. But the thing is, is that you know you can have your natural range, but you keep on growing. I mean. Uh, Will has said yesterday that when he first started doing Discord for Daughter of Discord, he... <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, I'll, like, I'll be honest, when, my, when I first did Discord, like, I personally think that's my weakest uh, sort of voice, but uh, now I can 
like I don't worry too much about the technicals, which is actually like another point which we'll bring up later. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Stay in the moment of a scene. Don't worry too much about technicals. It's like what I said earlier. When you were a kid, you didn't worry too much about, oh, did I do this right? Was I believable in the moment? Because it's just staying in the moment and just letting it happen. Now I can do, I can do just do Discord voice stuff, drop up a hat with no worries, and I just, I just, I just go for it. You just take what you're given and go for it. Learn improv. It helps with you yes, with spontaneity. That improv is definitely a great skill to learn, and even even you, Spencer, uh, you're. I can tell that you're still learning, but. After you won the Voice of Presser, you actually got to uh, visit uh, Tara Strong in her house. Yeah. Uh, you got to, you know, see her. Um, <laughs> well, no, uh, I was going to expand on the point of actually the last slide. Uh, more of a question, too. Who's looking to want to do voiceover, not just online, but maybe like a future career? Yeah, like who wants to try and do this as a professional? So, a lot of, I've been through like a bunch of different and voice acting panels. And they go, you know, how do I do voice acting? What's the first step? And I, I'll, I'll be, I always hear like the follow your dreams and go for it advice, but there's never any practical advice, and I don't know why. If you want to do voiceover or, or just acting in general, the most important thing to do to answer the last slide, you know, be an actor first. But what do you got to do to be an actor? Go take acting classes. Exactly. And not just voice acting. I'm talking like um, they're saying improv. Take you know. You know, and they're not expensive. You can actually go to like a local theater or yeah. high school. They can, they probably have programs like colleges and stuff. And you know, it's a starting, it's a stepping stone. You know, if, if you do it online, that's great and all, but if you really want to hone in on your craft, if you really want to get down with, yo, let's learn acting. Let's get the core values out of the way for acting. You have to take classes. Like if I want to be a doctor, I got to go to school, right? So if you want to be an actor, voice actor, whatever kind of actor branch you want to be, take classes. It's the most important thing. Take it with people who have been doing it for many, many years. Um, there's classes, especially because like, you know, we're in like the LA area. Mm -hmm. um, they have classes every week, every, every, every day almost. Yeah, and some have even expanded to, you know, online. In fact, it's actually an interesting point you bring that up. Uh, I want to add something. No, there is no one strict formula to get into the business. Every person's story is different. One example I know is Steve Bloom, who voices Spike Spiegel in Cowboy Bebop, and uh, was Tom on uh, Toonami. He voices a lot of things. Yeah, he, he voices a lot of things. That's like a Guinness Book of World Records for most voices in the video game. He actually never started as an actor. He was an audio engineer, and uh, he had no formal training whatsoever, but he just, when he was told to get into the booth, he just followed what his gut told him, and now look where he is. So again, no. Like some people do classes, some are some like Steve Bloom are like special little blossoms that you know get to their own um, thing, yeah. their yeah. own ways. Yeah. 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 Another yeah. little tidbit, actually, like for people who may get discouraged from time to time with voiceover, you guys know Steve Bloom. He does. He does all the deep monsters and the big. Hey, how you guys doing? And he sometimes I run through the mouth. Yeah. Oh, that's how I was trying. Oh, that's how. He didn't start doing voiceover professionally until he was forty. I don't know if you guys know that. He started doing that way late into his life, and look where he is now. Yeah, there's this a bunch of maybe like 16, 20 years. There's a bunch of popular people all over the media that have not started something until they're like 40 to 60. Like Louis Black is a really popular comedian. He didn't start until he was like 50 because he was playwriting for 30 years. He's hilarious. He's amazing. Um, but something that I would recommend for those who feel like a little discouraged is to go back to the basics. Um, I'm in case, I can't do any canon character voice. But throughout all the networking that I've done, I know Scribbler, I know No Lost Narrator, I know like a lot of people. Whenever there's a sarcastic character, as you can tell from my voice, it's automatically thrown at me <laughs> because it's just so easy. And another recommendation that I would be is to be social. When you're like up on these panels and stuff like that, you're looking at these audiences, or you're out in parties and stuff, and you can see like the types of like maybe there's a girl in the corner who's trying to like get into the dance and you can just see like the awkwardness on her and she's like stepping in, stepping out. You can put that into your voice. Especially like say someone walks up to them, what is in that voice? Yeah, yeah. I, I can I can agree with that one hundred percent. And uh, there's also yeah, like we also expand on earlier, there's a difference between show, doing show accurate voices and acting. Like I know this was also covered by Lost Narrator in her panel like at uh, Equestria LA. Um, some people can, you know, just like, hey, listen to my impression of Rainbow Dash, and yeah, that could be spot on, but again, 
You need to put the acting and emotion behind that, otherwise it's just a voice. Yeah, okay. it's like it's like my shining armor, it's like, hi, I'm shining armor. Or, hi, I'm shining armor. Yeah. Yeah, see, yeah, see, there's a very, very big difference between those two. The first one, you, it's like, eh, like that, that's, that, that sounds okay. It but sounds then, like him, but... Yeah, it sounds like him, but you don't believe it's him. And uh, also another thing, don't be afraid of being typecasted. There are, some, there are some actors out there that think, oh, I'm only good for just one role, and I, I, I should be versatile. Like, I want to be the next Mel Blanc, who voices, all, voices every single Looney Tune. Typecasting is your friend because it helps you appreciate what you're good at. Like, for example, Meryl Streep can't really play the roles that Angelina Jolie can play. So everyone has their own specific sort of, you know, like repertoire of what they can do. Think of it this way. I'd rather be typecast than have no rules at all. Yeah. And exactly, yeah. Like yeah, and I, I mean, you don't stop trying different voices even if you do get typecasted, but it does help you get jobs. Like, but, uh, role, not just for roles, I'm usually casted as the very high energetic person, like um, for Josh Scorcher's uh, Fire Emblem dubbing of yeah, all the characters, got casted as a, I got casted as a, no way, the uh, medic who's basically a thousand-year-old child, who is basically my Pinkie Pie voice, and for Scribbler, I'm doing stuff as Harley Quinn, so I usually get voices, very funny from my new voice, in a higher range, along with doing uh, fancy people and uh, motherly people, or very menacing, and yeah, like a soldier, because I because like for uh, Born Quill, I'm doing Into the Depths as, a, so, as Lieutenant Twin Blades, I know, it's cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. But uh, just don't afraid to be typecasted, because like the like Vicodin said, it's better than not having a role at all. Exactly. But, but don't be afraid of rejection either, because there's always another role behind yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Just because that you didn't get the part, that doesn't mean there aren't other opportunities out there for you in future. So we'll try and get through this next couple slides pretty quickly. So. Again, like we said before, know your range and know your voice type. Like, like for example, if you're in a choir, a ten, like a soprano can't sing bass and vice versa. So it's important to know what's in your repertoire and know what you're know what you're good at. Experiment. Like, like maybe like record yourself in a mirror, like while you're driving your car, try to you know experiment by like reading signs that you pass in different voices, see what you're good at, see and also. Very crucial. If a voice hurts to do, don't do it at all. <laughs> yeah, like a lot of people, a lot of actors go through, like especially like in video games, go through what we call throat destroyers when they have to do like a lot of reaction sounds. And sounds <laughs> those sort, of, those sort of things. So. Vocal health is very important. So Especially no since you're not going to do it right the first time. So you're going to do like 20 takes of a death screen. <laughs> exactly. Learn to like tea and honey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. tea and honey. It is really good on the voice. All of the voice actors say that they drink it. Exactly. What's going to happen is you're going to go in there and be like, all right, let's do it. And then on Sunday, <laughs> it's going to suck. Another misconception is a lot of people get told, like, like I know, I was told like actually yesterday that uh, my singing voice actually sounds a lot like Frank Sinatra, and I was I was personally not aware of this, and uh, like I don't think I sound like Frank Sinatra. I'm just doing me. But another thing to report is when you're acting, like don't wait for people to tell you that you're good enough. You need to place value in yourself first. If you think that you can just go in there and give it your all. Then by all, then the audience will know that, and you'll not only feel not the audience won't only feel good, but you'll feel good about yourself. When you go into online projects and everything, especially, none of them have any time to provide you with feedback. They don't. They don't like. They maybe just way too busy. They have like five million auditions for one character. Yeah, so yeah. You really have. This is with any type of content. You have to be. You have to drive to do it. Yeah. Not just that. Uh, for online specifically, unless you have a director like, like say, over Skype or on the phone here to help guide you, you need to also develop a little bit of 
self-direction. Like I know I do that all the time, and even I still I still struggle with that. But you know what? When when I hear the end product, I'm like, oh, okay, that was actually not too bad. It actually worked. So that that's something else to keep in mind. So uh, moving on, uh, equipment recommendations. These are mostly, mind you, these are for if you want to stay strictly to online because these the, these equipment recommendations may not be for you if you want to actually go the extra distance and uh, go do this professionally. Yeah, this is something that really is the USB mics are phenomenal if you have a budget. If you want to do something decent on a budget, USB microphones are your best friend. Yeah, so either like a blue snowball. Don't use a headset, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. either I mean, head, yeah. headsets or built-in laptop mics, there are no no. Yeah, um, like for my recommendation, my recommendation for like a, someone who's starting out, always try to upgrade your equipment once you get into a more comfortable, you know, financial bracket. But a good one to start out with for semi-professional voice acting is the Blue Yeti because yeah, it has yeah, a really inexpensive, like about what, like hundred dollars. Um, the one when I got it, I, yeah, when I got it, it was one hundred and fifty, uh, and it has it, it's really good. You can uh, change the, change the gain and change which direction. Always keep it uh, uh, mono directional, so it's just pointing out your voice. Invest in a pop filter. Pop filter, yes, that's something I didn't put on the slide. That's also because because if you just have a microphone, it's going to pick up on the and that's yeah, yeah, that hurts ears. And yeah, people want to stop looking at your totally at Pacific, totally college pushing for papers. Exactly, invest in the pop filter. Like you can get one on Amazon for like twenty dollars. If you're really broke, pantyhose and a coat hanger. I'm dead yeah. at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 more talk at an angle. Yeah, you know, like we're talking like this and uh, lights, and also talk don't, above it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk, talk above it, or like like in your head space, like by between like, by between your nose and your forehead. I can also pick that up. Yeah, and um, get if you're going to become an online voice actor, learn to become an audio engineer because you are going to be if you're not cutting your own audio, if you're doing collabs, you're going to be cutting your own. Yeah, um, Audacity I'm, has some pretty good functions for itself, but... Yeah, unless the head of your project is like asking for different takes so that he or she can choose for themselves, or if they want to include bloopers, learn to use either like Audacity, or if you have the money, download Adobe Audition, and cut out your best takes, and learn to, you know, take out the breaths in between each take so that it sounds good. The last quick recommendation I have for people that can't afford any of the things on this screen besides Audacity, which is free. You can use your cell phone to use noise removal and Audacity. I mean, it gets you started. Like we said, you're not gonna, you wanna get started. And that's the point, is that even if you have to use your phone and use voice recorder, you're still starting somewhere. Exactly. But I wanted to just quickly, actually, I wanted to add on top of it. Anybody got iPhones? Probably like most of you. Um, I recently uh, was in a class with Catherine Cavatini. She does the voice of Blossom for Powerpuff Girls. Oh, I've actually had a class with her in a couple of weeks. So. Oh, you're gonna enjoy it. Oh yeah, I'm definitely. Um, there's actually a, an app that she recommended to us in the class. It's called. You might want to put it in your notes. It's called TW Recorder. It's actually what she uses when she's on the go. If she's like in her car and they're like, "Hey, we need a thing," and she's like, "Oh crap, okay." So she just boop, 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 and this sound quality is actually really well. I actually tested it out myself for it. And I like it. It's free. You don't got to pay nothing. It's free. No, it's free. All right. Next is uh, collaborations. This this mostly goes for online voice software, but if you're acting. If you want to you know, collab with anyone online, like say for fanfic readings or comic does, these are some uh, notes to point out. Try to do your own stuff first before going out asking others, because that way, when you do your own stuff, you'll know what your strengths and what your weaknesses are so that you can, you can better compensate for each other from whoever you're collaborating with. Yeah, find people yourself are, before you find others. Yeah, people are less likely to collaborate with you if you have nothing to yeah, show for. Yeah, like if you're just now starting out and just saying, hey, I really want to collab with you, but I haven't done anything, but can we still do it? And the other person will have no idea what you're capable of. At least put out a demo reel. Yeah, yeah, put together like a demo reel or like do like a few like little things by yourself. These can even be, you know, silly pieces or, you know, like your, your own readings, like I'm doing my own readings and stuff like that, just to, you know, not just test it out, but, you know, help, you know, collab with others, like, say, like, 
scribbler of austerity and stuff like that. So those who don't know what voice reel is, all the voices you're capable of doing in less than a minute and a half. Because exactly. voice reels, the purpose of them is for project leaders to look at them and be like, okay, I want that voice. It's basically like a business card. Exactly yeah. Exactly, your business card. Yeah, yeah. And another thing, I cannot stress this enough, be professional. Please. So many projects have died because of drama. I got it. So many people come up to my channel every day and ask in the comments, can I be a part of your channel? I can do this comment, I can do this voice. And trust me, trust me, I can do it. Send yeah. me an email. My email is very easy to find. Okay, so this topic is one, two, three, four, four, four. Basically, if you want to collab with someone, prove that you are worth their time. Check out the SoundCloud, bruh. Yeah, I'm doing a bunch of collabs over the course of this month with uh, Nina, Pitch, Lost Narrator, and Silverquill. And all of them, I was, you know, emailing, hey, we'll meet up at this con, I know you, like, let me explain. You gotta know what, you gotta do your research and know what you're doing before you ask them. Because yeah. if they're like, oh, what is it? And you're like, oh, they're not gonna do it. And also, uh, this will be probably another point later. Um, scripts and context is everything. I cannot tell when I first started out and when people asked me to be in their projects, there would be a lot of times when they would just send me the, all my lines in just one separate document and I would have no idea what the context of the whole entire scene is and that kills your performance. Yeah, because then it would become like one character's like, Pitch, hold on, there's a bomb! And then he would probably be like, oh cool, a bomb! So, and it, it just doesn't fit. So yeah, ask, ask whoever you're collab collaborating with to send you like the entire script. It doesn't matter if it's just five pages or a hundred. Have them send the entire script so you know, again, it's brought to another point earlier. When you know why you say what you say, it informs you and allows you to play. If you're the one sending the script to people, this is just a nice, uh, polite, professional tip. Yes. Um, highlight. Uh, color code the lines for people. If you, the thing I do, because mostly I do one shots, I usually have uh, separate documents with all of their stuff highlighted, yeah, so they can like highlight the lines yeah. of whoever you're. Color saying. coded so shining armor is blue, twilight's purple, and all that stuff, so it's easier to read. Yeah, yeah, so and then also that encourages them to uh, want to get the work done faster for you, because then they look at they look at an entire script and they're like, where's my lines? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, another thing. Get to know your director. Get to, get like get to know the people that you're going to be working with, because you know it's it's another tip to bring up. Be like be social. You know, it's like talk with them. Like see, like not just you know get to know all those people, but like how they work and uh, you know how you can bring your own stuff to the table. And just saying, being social and being nice and friendly is not an excuse for pestering because I've gotten a few times where I've gotten a few uh, people who want to be voice actors yet that just message me on Skype saying, hey, 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 you there? Hey, yeah. you're not there, are you? Hey. Yeah, right. yeah the, the tip that I give for people that are auditioning for stuff is I tell them to record your audition, send it in, pretend you never did it. Just like have a copy in your folder because if you start like emailing them five times saying, well, How's my audition going? they're not going to pick it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, if discussed, be able to try and work with deadlines because I know actors in the business today need to be able to record like on the fly, like within like 24 hours. Um, but uh, yeah, ask your director if there is a deadline so that way you can be able to plan yourself out, you know, when you can record and if you need to mix it or, you know, edit it as, what, as much as you can, so. Yeah, again, yeah, and ask if they, they themselves would prefer you mix it them yourself or to send it raw so that they can do it. So I, I will say that in the professional world, they will always ask you to send the raw vocals because they don't like you matching it unless they that, That's what they hire a professional so. audio engineer is for. Yeah, unless they specifically state so, or you are in fact an audio engineer as well, which has happened before, some people who became from audio engineer too. Right, right, exactly. Other skills you may need, uh, like we said, be social, learn to interact with people, and not only that, you can also, you know, like say, go into a coffee shop and, you know, have a look around and uh, get to, like, see, like, see some of the people that you're around. If they have like certain quirks, maybe you can take some of that and you know sort of build upon a character that you know you're going to audition for. Like say if you find like say you 
find some like Hispanic guy, you know, talking to the uh, Starbucks clerk, and you know, you listen to how he talks, and it's like, oh, okay, I can try to emulate that maybe for this audition I got coming up. So you know, it's like like good actors borrow, great actors steal. It. So so, but again, like try to you know make it your own as well. And uh, like we said, audio mixing is good. Marketing, learn how to market yourself. Like get a Facebook or a Twitter and stuff like that. And advertise your demo reel or your website, how they can contact you, all that sort of stuff. The projects you're in, especially. Exactly. Yeah. Like I myself have play, like I have a playlist of uh, all the stuff that I voiced in when I uh, started doing online stuff. And that, I can easily, people can look through that even though it's like 100 videos long. They'll pick and choose like which, which projects they, it's like, oh, hey, you were in that project? Oh, that's cool. So yeah, maybe I can use you. Yeah, when you want to want, when collaborations, when you, if you want to make like a YouTube channel and like make it for a while, mm -hmm. collaborations are the easiest way to get yourself subs. So when you could just market both yourself and the person that you collab with, your subs are going to go through the roof. Yeah, as as it's yeah YouTube, SoundCloud, just whatever resources you have, you have multiple stuff on the internet that you can use. Being able to read. This is another thing, this was actually reminded of when I staffed at Equestria LA, John Delancey was a guest. And every single, uh, like, even when these young kids came up, he, like, he explained this at Everfree Northwest, he was, uh, he has dyslexia. And uh, it's very important to know how to at least be able to read well so that you can give a better performance. So, so even, even with a guy like John Delancey and having dyslexia and being able to still voice Discord, like, he, know, he knows how to work through what he has and, you know, still give a stone Like you said, competitive yeah, knows the for you. Yeah, improv is also another thing I just didn't put in the slide. So, yeah, take improv classes. Like, if you're in, like, Los Angeles, maybe check out, you know, the Groundlings or stuff like that. Or, like, like or, like, take an improv class at college, because I know there are some campuses that offer that. So that's another skill I have. And... Maybe on the side, learn how learn about business because, like I said, voice acting is not just a job; it's a business. Learn how to market yourself so that clients would want to take you in, and possible agents learn how to take you in. Learn how to market your demos well, and like you can't just you know walk up to like a professional studio like Nickelodeon and stuff like that. It's like, hey, I made a demo in like three three days to take a listen to it if you want. I'd love to work with you. No. That like, they will immediately call security and kick you out the door. How did you release your demo on pitch? Will knows the story. I didn't. I didn't have a demo. I got found in a Walmart doing funny voices, and a talent agent picked me up. So you, you, there's there's random things that can happen to where you can be picked up as a voice actor, but don't expect that to be happening. Yeah, it's like we said before. Everyone, Walmart. Everybody's Walmart. story is different. Sponsor. Let's see. Recommended resources, uh, like I stated earlier, there's Voice Acting Mastery, which is a wonderful blog and podcast by Crispin Freeman. He also does online workshops and uh, little weekend workshops in Burbank. Um, so yeah, all the stuff is on his website, so again, it's Voice Acting Mastery. Talking Tunes podcast by Rob Paulson. If you don't know who Rob Paulson is, you might know him as Yakko and Animaniacs, Pinky and Pinky and the Brain, or uh, Carl from Jimmy Neutron or Donatello in the 2012 TMT. So he goes around, like, he has live shows at the improv, like, once every other month or so. But he basically, he goes to, you know, other people in the industry, like friends like Tara Strong or uh, E.G. Daly or Elise LaMarche, Jess Harmel, and he basically just talks with them about the craft, how they got started, what they recommend. It's it pretty much, it's like, it's like free teaching from the professionals. It's free learning from the best. Why would you go? If you have time on your hands, you're just sitting at home watching computer movies or whatever. Yeah, or if you like, have like a long road trip ahead of you, like say, like to San Diego from San Francisco, that's something to pop in and listen to. Kyle A. Bear, who was uh, who was in stuff like uh, throwing logging and stuff like that, he also offers um, online classes. Like, like these would also be for like beginners, like for like a reasonable price, he'll talk with you on Skype for about an hour to, uh, you know, get yourself started. So that's another one I recommend. Um, if you're in the Los Angeles area, like if you live there in Burbank, Bang Zoom Studios. They mostly deal with uh, dubbing English anime, but uh, Tony Oliver 
is a, a wonderful teacher. He was a, he was in the early Gundam series, and he was also a Power Ranger, so he knows what he's doing. So uh, definitely check out like uh, um, like also Adventures in Voice Acting. There's a, a website and a DVD that has been released that can you know, also get pointers, just like uh, Talking Tunes podcast, except it's a DVD where you know oh. interviews different people. And yeah, interviews. and a quick sideline: if you want to voice in anime dubs. Have fun, because uh, we yeah. went, because uh, me, Will, and uh, Golden Fox went to uh, two talks with a bunch, with Steve Flume and the voice of Goku and stuff. And oh, I was yeah, yeah, you're going to have to learn how to the, speed up and talk because you have to fit the mouth flaps. Yeah, you have to fit the mouth flaps. Like in any anime, though, there's like three beats, <laughs> and on the imaginary fourth beat, that's when you go, and you have to match the timing of the lip flaps, and that's. Probably like the hardest form of voiceovers. That's it's not impossible, but it is difficult. So another one, Richard Horvitz. He is a uh, Chrisman Freeman's actual personal mentor, and uh, he also offers classes in Los Angeles, and he also offers uh, private online workshops. And uh, he reviles like five steps to playing pretend fully, and I cannot tell you how invaluable those five steps are. So. That's definitely somebody to check out if you have time and if you have a passion for it. And uh, with that said, I think we have some time for a quick Q&A. Um, any questions? Uh, yes, yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, just to, funny given what I did with Beauty Box, um, if you are doing singing auditions, it, if you think it's hard to voice a character, to sing as the character is even harder, because even I struggle with that. You have to not only sing as a character, get the right inflections, you also have to still sing on the key. Yeah, okay. yeah. As but, far, um, but as far as like, you know, searching for people to be in the project, I say, like search around, like you know, like YouTube. See if see if anybody put up like reels of you know, Pinkie Pie voices or like stuff like that. Look, just look around and then like friendly approach them. Like I said, be professional. It's like, hey, I watched your demo. I think you have a really nice Pinkie Pie singing voice. I'm planning this. Would you like to participate in it? And for sound editors, um, you can still look around. I would recommend. If people have released Fix on their own and they say that it was edited by them, you could message them. However, I will give you the pre-warning, a lot of sound editors do do commission price. So make sure if you make a video asking for them that it is volunteer only unless you want to discuss a price. There are some websites such as Voice Acting Club and Voice Acting Alliance that you can actually, it's a forum and you can put what your plan is for this particular project in there and ask for auditions. Just provide like an email of the lines, what you're planning on doing and everything and you can also find a sound editor that way. And um, that's when you go into like sort of a collaboration effort. It takes way more effort to have collaborations and stuff like that because you're working with so many other people, working with deadlines and everything like that. But I'd rec if you can't find anything on like voice reels and anything, you can't like get a hold of anyone. I tried those it's voice acting club. Just Google voice acting club or voice acting ones. But again, also another thing is to like if you're reaching out to new people, again, also do your own thing first. See what your your cable love. That way you can better compensate for with others. Kind of on a side note, actually, I wanted to add because you were talking about singing. Hang on. Hang on. And he's, he had his hand up. Like, good one. Are you sure? Oh, I was just going to say, to add on top of that, if voice acting is a thing that you want to pursue, doing another sort of uh, art, like music or singing, that actually helps a lot. Like, if you're in a band and you play guitar or something, or, you know, you're in choir for your church or something, whatever, that actually helps out a lot, because it helps you develop, I don't know if there's a name for it, I just call it musical ear. You start to learn how to pick up certain sounds, different ranges and things like that. Pitch. So it's like, if you can sing and you want to get into voiceover, you'll have a little, I don't want to say easier, but it'll help you out because you'll start to see, 
oh, they're like a higher pitch. You know, everyone's got like kind of like a flow to their points. Go, because like this is kind of really fast. Why can't it does stop? But that's all like this one. If you could do something else that also differentiates you in a competitive environment, we already mentioned that voice acting is competitive. And if you could do two things rather than one, more the better. Yeah, exactly. So again, like build up your repertoire. Like then we'll have like other people like Andrea Lemon who can do two voices at the same time. So yeah. So uh, anything else? Next right there. Any other questions? Oh, yes. Yeah, basically she took the um, what she was given for 
the character and what she, what what she looks like, what her mannerisms are, what you know, what she how her emotions are going to feel. She takes what those characteristics are and you know makes the voice. And you know, again, the voice is just a layer to the overall character. Yeah, and a little sideline thing: if you're doing uh, voices for the fandom. Don't be afraid if your voice does not sound exactly like what the fandom says. Because, for example, when I'm doing uh, Allegretta, which is the pick I'm doing with Lost Narrator and Scribbler, with Scribbler as Octavia, Lost Narrator is voicing vinyl and she does not sound like No Whacking's vinyl, but that's not a bad thing. A, a, a voice, you can do a voice, but if you've got the character down... Yeah, she still, she still gets the mannerisms of vinyl down to a T. And it may not sound like no wagging, but she's still, you, you can still sense that it sounds like, oh yeah, this is what, how vinyl would sound, and like, it's, it's, this is how she would act. Something that I would try doing, more for fun, more than anything else, are two things. One, talk to yourself a lot. Um, because it's almost like you're talking to yourself, but in a way, you honestly start finding things that you don't expect. Like, if you're like, you know, hi there, how are you? I'm doing that, how are you? And, okay. you're doing great. and then you're like, oh wait, I could do that sound, I could try that sound. Oh, that's it's, it's, like, it's, it's more or less just self-discovery, uh, in a sense. The other fun thing that I would recommend doing is try doing, not everything, but I would say try doing as much as you can outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, don't because one, my friend, and he knows this, a lot of my friends know a character, it was before, you know, before ponies or anything, I would just do a character voice, her name is Shinene. She's a sassy big black woman. I am not a sassy big black woman. But I did it, and over the years I developed that character as her own thing, you know, so, you know, it's me. I don't sound like yeah, that. And then Sapphire Shores comes around. Right? <laughs> but, also, but that character, you know, it's like, oh, I need that one, girl. Mm, mm, you know, all that. That's totally not me, but it's a fun character to play with. I love doing that. Yeah, I do that a lot. Like, I, that's why I love doing a lot of things. Yeah, I think we have one more point from Vibe. The last thing I wanted to mention is that building off of out of your comfort zone, if you're really not comfortable doing your lines, the project leader can tell. Especially if you're trying to do like a yelling line and you're not absolutely yelling, they can definitely tell. And they will tell you to go. It's like, uh, it's like death. Like, uh, no, that, that's that, like, they'll immediately I know it's like, like, oh, you sound too bored with this. You need to go yeah. all out and just. Yeah. If, you need, if you need to trash your vocal cords to do so, then it, just go the distance. Don't never stop learning. Go outside your comfort zone and just be in the moment. So. And like that. And yeah, do we have more time for one more question? Uh, no, I, I, yeah, yeah, I think we're good. Anyways, thank, thank you for playing. Yeah, thank you all so much for coming. Hope you learned something. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Have a super fun. Thank you. And also, thank you to all these people that came out here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much.